today we are going to be creating a very interesting particle simulation this time we are going to be filling this body with particle and instead of using the body itself as a collider we are going to use the particles to create our dynamic simulation now a few things to keep in mind before you get into this is the more denser your object is the more time it will take the particles to calculate the whole body now what do i mean by that by the dense, I mean I don't mean the overall topology. Now here you'll see that I have a very dense geometry, the overall topology. I sculpted this skull in ZBrush, that's why it's so dense. And it's not about how much uh, subdivisions your model has. It's more about how much space it's going to take to fill the whole area. Now here you'll see if I get inside of this object, this is completely hollow from inside. So all this area, which is completely empty, are going to be filled with N particles. Now, the more space you have, the more time it will take to calculate the whole scene. Now, for the original scene, uh, as you can see in the thumbnail, which I created for the skull, it took me roughly about somewhere about 1 hour 20 minutes or 1 hour 10 minutes, somewhere about that time. And just to calculate the whole filling the particle in this body. I'm not even calculating the rendering time and the simulation time. Just to fill the body with the particle, it took me about an hour or so. So before getting into any kind of simulation, be sure that you want to use that object or the amount of filling you want. So I'm going to use this as a demonstration. Then I'm going to create a, a simulation in a much simpler primitive like a torus or sphere. Just so you get the idea because for a tutorial purpose, it will take too much time to calculate. So I'm going to select my object here. Go to FX and particles for object. And here you'll notice that we have resolution. This will decide the resolution of the end particles filling the whole area. And I'm going to make this 10 first and I'm going to hit fill particles. All right, so it roughly took about one to two minutes. And uh, here you'll notice that if I go to my shape here and if I turn off the visibility, let me turn off the X-ray. This is the overall just the resolution of 10. And I think for the final rendering, I did somewhere about 250 or 300 resolution of n particle. That's why it took so long and that's why it was so detailed. Now, even though we have kept around 10 resolution, it took us around two minutes and overall the result is not that great looking. So the more resolution you have, the more better the result will be at the cost of obviously calculation time. So I'm going to hit undo here to get back to my original form here. And I'm going to res up my overall resolution to about 20 and I'm going to hit particle fill. All right. So it was roughly about five minutes. And if I turn off the X-ray mode, let me just turn off the display of the skull. And now, as you can see, we are getting some details, but not good enough. If I turn on my skull and in the X-ray mode, you'll notice that it's filling the whole skull, but not entirely. You can't see any particles in the tapered areas in sharp areas so we need more smaller particles that means we have to increase our resolution even higher so again uh, the more denser your object going to be the more time it's going to take to calculate the whole thing so i'm going to switch to a simpler uh, primitive let's uh, turn this off and let's turn off the x-ray i'm going to delete this and particle i'm going to choose something like let's create something else let's take maybe a helix let's bring this up and um, Let's make the width to 3, height to maybe like 3 as well. Let's make it 4 and radius 2.5 maybe. Let's increase uh, the subdivision to 50 as well. So we have nice helix going on. I'm going to just rotate this to about 25 degrees. I think this looks good. Okay, so I'm going to go into the end particle fill object and I'm going to choose a resolution of maybe 50 and hit particle fill. All right, so it was pretty quick. I think it was uh, around 30 to 40 seconds. And this is what you have. Pretty nice looking. So you don't need the helix anymore. If you want, you can simply delete it. If you want, you can hide it. I'm going to simply delete it. And here you'll notice that we have much nicer particles. So if I play this um, from the first frame, now you have something like this. The first thing I want to do is quickly add a ground plane so if our simulation is going to act we'll have nice particles going on so as you can see it looks very nice and if you want you can also go to shading and change the blobby surface to maybe like points and from here you can play this it will be a bit faster all right so i'm going to keep it to spheres 
all right and uh, now for the dynamic properties the first thing that we have to do is again turn off the nucleus and we'll take something like maybe a uh, air all right so if i take the air and if i play this now you'll see that the air is attracting the overall and particles here but what the interesting thing about fields are what you can do is you can control it by some volumes now if i go to my fields and solver i can take something like maybe a gravity since we don't have the gravity anymore what we can do is if i play this we have the gravity it's affecting all the particles what i can do is go back to the volume control attribute and i can choose a volume maybe something like a uh, sphere something like this and uh, now here gravity is not affecting anything any particle at all but if i move this a little bit downwards and if i play this again you'll notice that it's affecting the particles that are only inside of the uh, surface now those particles are hitting the other sphere and that's how the dynamics are being applied to other spheres as well so here you'll notice that anything that is apart from outside the spheres outside this volume are not being affected by the gravity that's why the spheres are floating in the deep space so here if you think the sphere is volume is too small what you can do is you can make the scale to somewhere about 222 and now you'll have something like this all right so what i can do is i can come here i can bring this up i can go to 20 hit s i can go somewhere about 60 and i can bring this down and hit s again all right so if i play this now you'll notice that as it's animating it's affecting all the particles here now i think the overall volume of this size is a bit too much so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to make this one again and i'm going to right click set key so make sure you're on the first frame and then as it goes downwards it's going to increase its size to two so if i go back and play this you'll have nice animation like this now there's one problem with this kind of simulation that is the gravity is not natural after it falls after that it's just floating in the air so how can we fix that what we basically can do is go to our nucleus we can go to our 60 frame uh, because we use 60 as our gravity number what we can do is we can take our nucleus right click on your gravity set key and from the zero what we can do is go back to the 65 and we can make it 9.8 which is the default gravity of our earth and right click and set key so from here once the particle falls down the rest of the particles falls down as well so now you have nice land vision. so the spheres are sticking to the ground they are not floating in the deep air or something like that i'm gonna make this somewhere about 100 i think that should be enough and there you go so again i think uh, this is 65 is too long i think so I'm going to cut this keyframe and I'm going to go to 61 and paste. And uh, with this, I'm going to do one more thing just to add a bit more interesting thing. I'm going to make this 0.8 and let's copy this 0.8 to all the axis, X, Y, Z and set key. So now we have much smaller. So when it goes down, it's only affecting the bottom part and these areas and these areas are not be, be affected with the volume. So those particles will be affected by the nucleus gravity. So now here, as you can see, those particles fell down as well. So it looks pretty good. Uh, if you want to cast this, or if you want to mm, play this smoothly, what you can do is go to simply end catch and an object. But before doing that, I'm going to do one thing that is, you can remove the color if you want. If you want to constant color, you can do that. I'm just going to change some particle here. And let's bring this right about here randomize id and uh, something like this just to add some variation here and now we have lots of different spheres it looks pretty good and in the collision i think i'm gonna make the bounciness to maybe like 0.6 and friction to 0.2 as well okay so the rest is good all right so let's uh, select this and uh, let me just play back my simulation one more time okay and again if you want what you can do is you can select this and you can change this to um, anything something like maybe a cylinder and uh, since we have set key we have to animate this again right click set key again since we have keyed that as well all right so i'm gonna quickly catch this select this in catch 
and an object. All right, so our catching is done. And let's see now. So this is how you can create pretty nice and dynamic gravity looking in particles. And uh, this looks pretty good, looks pretty sandy. You can do lots of cool stuff. And I think the main overall realism of this, the main cinematic part of this is obviously the part where the rest of the particles are still in the midair and most of the particles are falling down in slow motion. All right, so that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next video.